story. Oh, have you girls got your toys picked up? Well, most of them we did. Oh, we don't want Grandma falling over the toys now. Please, just one tea tie story. Yeah, please. Maybe I'll tell you a story tomorrow. Grandpa's pretty tired. It's getting late. Please, just one. Just, just a really short one. Just a teeny tiny one that you can't even see it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I always fall for the giggles. Now, let me think here. How would you like to hear how your mommy got her name. Yeah! Okay. Once upon a time, hold on, let me start over. Once, there was a place far, far away. There was this kind of boss. What, did him have an office? You mean, did he have an office? I meant, did he have an office? Oh. Don't stick your tongue out at me. Now, girls, girls, calm down. Now, he had an office. One day he was sitting behind his desk, and he decided to call his secretary. Miss Secretary, will you ask Beulah 2721 to come into my office, please? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I'm hurrying as fast as I can. Take your wings off of me. Why, you Oh, little... Miss Beulah, please. Oh, this is pre-halo discrimination, I tell you. Just because I don't have my wings. <sighs> oh, nice office. Sir, I present Beulah. Two seven two one. That will be all, Miss Secretary. Thank Very you. Very good, sir. As for you, Beulah. Now I don't know what you heard up here, but I did not start that angel food cake fight in the cafeteria. Beulah, your I'm time gonna... has come. What? It's time for your first assignment. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> there for a second, I thought you were going to transfer me to um a, a warmer climate. No, no. Take a look down there. What do you see? Well, I, I see a bunch of blinking dots, and, and over there I, I see, well, there's a real bright yellow dot. Oh, of course. I forgot you haven't received your halo yet. Here, borrow mine. Wow! Things are starting to come into focus. Uh-oh. Oh, I think I broke it. I still see a big round circle. Oh, no, no, wait. It's just a, a chubby little... That is your first assignment. There's something very familiar about that little gumdrop. <gasps> gumdrop? Hey, is that my little... Yes, that's your grandson, Bobby. He's all grown up. Oh, he looks so sad. Why is he so sad? Is that Larry Alfred still teasing him about his weight? Oh, that tall, hairy-legged bully. I'll I'm afraid keep... it's a little more serious than that, Beulah. He believes he's reached his wit's end. He's about to give up. You mean he's thinking about kicking his own bucket? Not exactly the words I would have chosen, but... Oh, Bobby, what are you thinking, honey? Let me at him, boss. I'll shake some sense into that little round head of his. First, I think it would be wise for you to learn what led to his trouble. Oh, good thinking, boss. That's why your mansion's bigger than mine. Pull yourself up a cloud, Beulah. As you remember a little Bobby... You wouldn't think that two long pieces of steel, some wood and spikes, would be all that important in a person's life. But when you grow up on the wrong side of those tracks, well, like I did, everything you want and dream about can feel a million miles away. Like what, Grandpa? Oh, things like bicycles and... and people, too. 
Hi, Bobby. Did your bike break down again? No, the train just fell off. Me and Dad, we've got to fix it later. Aw, uh, too bad. Hey, Bobby. Your judgy old bike break down again? Yeah. No, Larry. Just the train came off. Ain't nothing wrong. Come on, Al. We gotta go. But we were just talking. Now. We gotta go now. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Ellen. Ellen and Bobby. Bobby sitting in a tree. I remember the first summer I met your grandma Ellie. Oh, she was so nice to me. And pretty too. Something else I remember from back then is that my mama and I would take the bus downtown. She sure did like to shop. It seemed like we were always at that five and dime. We'd walk those aisles for hours. My feet would hurt so bad, but your great grandma kept on going. It sure is. It's a beaut. It's even nicer than Larry's. But last Saturday, David let me use his bike since my train came off again and we all... Well, that was nice of him. I thought you and your father fixed that train just the other day. We did, but it came off again. Anyway, we all took turns jumping a ramp down on Bell Street. Uh, I came in third, but if I had this baby, I'd be a cinch to come in. I just hope you're careful. Now, you always watch for cars. And you never wear your church clothes. Oh, we always have a lookout watching for cars and stuff. Uh, Larry's cousin Elsa. You got the just lookout. be careful. Okay, we better get going. Your father's probably wondering where we are. Well, can I have it, Mom? Please. I've, I've been doing real good in school this year. Not today. We've got to go. I've got to get supper going. Well, what if I put in the five bucks that I made from helping Grandma put in her garden? Maybe we just we can't afford it right now. Maybe for your birthday or on Christmas. Look, Bobby, I'm sorry. But things are real tight right now since your father lost his job with Mr. Legani. I told you not to talk like that. And you don't know the whole story. Your father had a very important decision to make. And he made a good choice. Why doesn't it feel good? Someday you'll understand. It's not always easy to be a grown-up. <laughs> Just remember this. We both love you very, very much. <laughs> now, your Uncle Henry said he was going to come by after work, but he wasn't sure what time that'd be, darling. Okay, neat. How's it liking it down there, anyway? Oh, okay, I guess. That's good. Is that all the dinner dishes? Yeah! <clears throat> I mean, yes, ma'am. Oh, I'll tell you what, your Uncle Henry, I'll tell you what, he doesn't say a word unless I pry it out of him. And he thinks I have nothing better to do than to go around spreading his business. It's kind of like that, you know, kind of private-like. Hey, hey, maybe he's a secret agent or something. Oh, he's something all right there. I think he's kind of... I think he's kind of sweet on one of the secretaries down there. Oh, yes. Oh, a few nights ago, I heard him in his bedroom and talking on the phone, but I couldn't, couldn't make out what he was saying because he was talking so low. But I think her name might have been either Estelle or Betty. I've been better because, you know, he like that. You know, that human piece of mask. Happy birthday, Bobby, Bobby boy, boy, Bobby boy, Bobby boy. Birthday, Bobby boy. Bobby boy. Bobby boy. Happy, Happy birthday, Bobby boy. It's your birthday. Speech. Give us a speech. <laughs> Make a wish, Bobby. Oh, oh get him, get him. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, my word. Here, Bela, tell me about it. For sure, honey. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Thank you. 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 Here we go. I hope there's some left over for Uncle Henry. Oh, oh, there better be. I'll never hear the end of that, will I? <laughs> we'll leave that candle out of the way. I'll just put it right there. Oh, good to this. Oh, that was great. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Let's just, just get these stacked and we'll get them. Mm -hmm. oh, Enjoy that cake, Bobby. Yes. Right. Now, even though it's Bobby's birthday, we got you something for your interview tomorrow. Wow. Oh, a tie. Mom said red's a lucky color, Pop. Thank you, dear. Thank you to both of you. Bye.
I love it very much. All right. This is a present from Grandma. Oh. oh. You like it, Gumdrop? Oh, five bucks! Thank you, Grandma. You're the best. Oh, I figured that you're old enough now to do your own shopping, but you always remember this. You'll always be my little boonie boonie out of toonie. In toonie. <laughs> <laughs> Scam. <laughs> Time for your present from us now, honey. <laughs> Man at the store said it's real good quality. It's going to last you a long time. Yes, long. yes, yes, yes. And we even thing. got some of the Springfield Cardinals to sign the ball. <laughs> now, if I can find my glove up in the attic, later we'll go down to the park and play catch. Oh, be careful now. Just be careful. I don't want you getting hurt. Did you hear Miss Cornell's boy got hit in the mouth and he lost two of his permanent teeth? Yes, I heard about that. Of course, that boy never was really well coordinated. Uh, of course, if you ask me, I think he's a little touched. Well, no one did ask you, Grandma. <clears throat> my goodness, you want to get these dishes I on? I will. Mm. Oh, don't you love that honey? My goodness, sakes alive. Oh, my. What a day this has been, Bobby. Oh, my, something ain't set right with me. Oh. You okay? Oh, honey, I tell you what, there. Bobby, help me up here. I gotta get to the restroom. On you, baby. One, two, three. Oh, there you go. Thank you, darling. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Now, Bobby, I know, I know you really had your heart set on that bicycle. Maybe we can get the bike for Christmas. All right. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. I better go practice. Bobby! Oh, how I wanted a new bicycle. I was always getting teased about my bike and my old clothes and, you know. That's sad, Grandpa. When I grow up, I'm gonna have all the money in the world. Even though we didn't have as much money, my dad and I were able to spend more time together. We found out that we both love baseball. I like baseball. Me too. Just about every day when my dad got home from work, we'd, we'd play catch. Playing catch during some of the most exciting times in our nation's history. Everything was changing. New inventions and fads. Kids were doing some crazy things. Sometimes reading the newspaper was like reading a science fiction story. Some changes were good, some were bad. But during it all, we still had each other. When President Kennedy died, my dad cried. Times were changing. Our music was changing, too. There were lots of things going on. One day, I got a letter in the mail from Uncle Sam. The next thing you know, I was in another country. People were shooting at me, and I missed home something weird. When I got back from the Army, we kept playing catch. Things weren't quite the same. Even though we didn't always see eye to eye on things. Your great grandpa was quite a guy. Oh, wow. Ooh. That was something. <laughs> hey, honey, would you get us something to drink? Oh, I sure would. Thank you, love. That was a good time. Bob, your mom and I are a little bit worried about you. Oh, Pop, I'm okay. I went to the doctor. He said I'm all right. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, so you're talking about the car? I told you I'd pay you back. <laughs> the other guy's not even going to press charges. It's not about the car. It's not about Mr. Weber or his car. It's about you. What I'm talking about is you going out all hours of the night and doing who knows what. I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not asking what you do. You're a grown man. It's that you're up until dawn, and you know your mother waits up for you. The other night I woke up, and I heard her praying. 
She was praying about you. You know, ever since I got out of the Army and spent that time in California and got my hair permed, <laughs> that's all I hear about is Mama praying, praying, praying. She was begging God that you would turn your life around before it was too late. She didn't even know that I heard her. When she got up to go to the bathroom, I rolled over and her pillow was wet. It's a puddle of tears for you. So what are you saying? I should just move out? No, what I'm saying is there's, there are things that are more important than what you're doing right now. I get it. You just want me to settle down, get married, get a job, work in a place just like you, that nobody's going to have to worry about Big Bag Bobby anymore. That just don't work for me, Dad. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is... Don't take this wrong, Dad. I love you and Mom. But I want to wake up one day and feel like I've missed out on something. Sometimes you can't be scared to break the rules. Well, do you think that's what I was, was scared? <laughs> what are you two arguing about now? Baseball or baseball? <laughs> baseball. He's still a New York fan, and I love my red and white. Oh, we'll talk about this later, son, okay? All right. Here we go, dear. Thank you. There. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, that hit us spot. Well, I gotta get to see uh, Uncle Clyde. He's, he's, he's going to be waiting on me for his weekly visit. I'm so glad you go to see him. 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 I guess. As long as I can remember what I have to get. Well, here is the list and the money. All right, thanks, honey. Would you hold this for a second? Sure, I'm going to. See what you need me to get. Mm -hmm. a gallon of milk, a dozen eggs, a book of stamps, and a candy bar. And this is it? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Three dollars and a quarter. That'll do it. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Thank goodness stamps aren't that much. I bet you in the future they're going to end up costing a whole quarter. Stamps a quarter. <laughs> Milk will be two dollars a gallon and gas will be a dollar a gallon. <laughs> oh, that'd be nuts. Oh. Son, you want to catch a ride? No, some of the fellows are coming to get me and I won't be late. Tell Uncle Clyde I said hi. Oh, me too. Give him a hug for me. Okay. Oh, Don't you lose my money. <laughs> my name is Roy Thompson. For those of you who don't know who I am, I work with John. And I remember the very first time we met. We were all in the break room. Uh, it was on a Monday morning. And the way I remember that is, well, I had a headache. I had a rough weekend. Here comes this jolly old friendly guy telling jokes around. And everybody with my kind of headache would, would love him too, believe me. He sat across from me while we were eating. And I noticed that he was reading the Bible. And I thought, oh great, here it comes. But he never even talked about it. He never even mentioned it. But I couldn't resist. I ask, I ask him in so many words, why are you reading the Bible? He just smiled, he said, we're studying the Bible. And he taught some Sunday uh, school classes. And uh, if I want to go with him, he'll be glad to give me a ride, you see. I lost my driver's license, and I didn't have too much time for God back in those days. Then, on another Monday, a few months later, I've had a rough weekend again. Things were going real bad for me. My wife left me, took my two kids. Anyway, John and I talked, and we ended up going to church. My whole life changed that day. I got my wife back. And I'm doing crazy things like spending time with my family first. And 
driving a bus, a church bus, that is. John and I became good friends, and this was his favorite song. May I? Remember and John, kind of hard thing to do with that. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the at my daddy's funeral I had a lot of things going on in my head that I didn't fully understand yet I was all mixed up inside even though I felt awful for my mom just couldn't take it. I had to get out of there. They kept saying things like how sorry they were and they, they would miss it. What they have to be sorry about? I was the one who was sorry. Things just didn't feel real. One day we were playing catch and talking about baseball and well then he was gone. There were so many things that I wanted to say to him and now I couldn't. I didn't understand why. I, I was so angry inside. Angry at me, angry at Dad, and angry at God. If there even was a God. Around me be falling. But he bids me go through the voice of all his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and still don't know how he did it but there was a note in my pocket from my dad's old boss Michael Leggetti dear Bobby grown you're quite, quite some young man I'm proud of you I just got into town you know your father he was a very important part of my life a man like him you just don't forget well, I know you got a lot of responsibilities now, and I want to help you. Consider it my way of repaying your father back for all he's done for me. Give me a call in a few days, and we'll set up a meeting. Give my best to your mother. Don't mention any of this to her until after the meeting. She's got enough on her mind. Well, Mr. Leggetti and I had our meeting. He made me his head of security. One thing about Michael, he sure liked his cigars. I didn't have the heart to tell him I was allergic to smoke. Then, one day I heard a knock on the door and I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, how are you doing? Hi. It was Ellen. She was all grown up. She and some friends of hers were, were there to invite me to church. We're out inviting people to church. We'd love to have you come. Oh, it was sure good to see her that day. I hardly noticed anybody else was there. It had been a long time since we were in our bikes down on Bell Street. 
but her smile was still the same. It was hard to believe that someone so beautiful was so nice. I got a good job with Mr. Leggetti, and things were looking up. As security chief, Michael had me put in some security cameras where he could keep an eye on things from his office. My mama was still praying. It seemed like her prayers were coming true. One day at work, I started reading that paper that Ellen and her friends gave me. It was that day that I made some true changes in my life. I found someone who would love me, no matter what. I even started going to church with Ellen and her friends. And I was enjoying it too. Did you do any fun things with your new friends, Grandpa? <laughs> I sure did. We played miniature golf, go out to eat, and just sit around talking about the funniest things. Things like whether people would ever really have telephones in their cars, and if so, would their cars fly? I usually tried to work it out where your Grandma Ellie and I were the last ones at the restaurant. She and I got to be really close friends. Then, when we get to our own homes, we would talk on the phone for hours. I still remember some of those talks. While I was talking to her, I always imagined what she looked like. I was sure glad that she couldn't see me. I would have been embarrassed in my old t-shirt and jeans. I bet when you were talking on the phone to Grandma Ellen, you were thinking how pretty she was. <laughs> I imagined she probably looked just like an angel. I wouldn't trade my memories of those days for anything. Well, things were going pretty well at work, too. One day, Mr. Leggetti called me into the office and he... Mr. Leggetti, do you mind if I... Uh... Yeah, go ahead. It's quite yeah. a unique piece. Yeah, that's the... Uh, it's a little memento from a thing from a guy I knew a couple of years ago. Okay, I... You know, I, don't, I hope I'm not in any trouble. I'm no, really... no. Hey, it's nothing like that. Don't worry about it. Listen, I told you, call me Michael. All right, put your mind at ease. Yes, All right? Hey, you want a cigar? Want a drink? Um, I quit. <laughs> you really are your father's son, aren't you? Yeah. You know, he would never partake. Well... Look, I know we've been giving you some grunt work around here. Maybe you feel like me and the boys are riding you a little bit hard. Well, I, I've never been afraid of hard work, but I just gotta ask you. Why do you pay me so well? All I do is just run some errands and clean up a little, you know, run wire and... Yeah, again, you know. well, we don't want to lose you. Like I said, you're an important part of this organization. Speaking of which, did you handle that meeting like I told you to yesterday? Yeah, I uh, took Mr. Brooks to lunch and I did everything he told me. I think you might be a little wrong about him. You know, he seemed like a pretty nice guy. <laughs> Don't let that Texas draw fool you, all right? He's a bum who thinks he's better than he is. Oh, all right. I, I just feel bad about raising my voice and, you know, storming out of the restaurant like that. Well, like I told you, it's just a negotiating technique. He needs to know we're serious. Didn't mean nothing. I know, but... Forget about it. You've definitely proven yourself. Look, I think it's time for a little bit of bump here. All right, take this. Go buy yourself a car and some nice clothes. Well, I don't know what to... And consider it a bonus. Like I told you on the first day, I got big plans for you. Uh, thank you. I, I really don't know what to say. Yeah, don't say anything. Remember, nobody needs to know anything about our business. Yes, sir. I got a situation that needs my attention. I don't want to see her in the morning, all right? Take that girl of yours out and have a really good time to celebrate tonight. <laughs> Well, she's not really my girl, but... This is the one. 
I'll, I'll take it. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Anderson. I'll go find my credit manager and meet you over in my office. Oh, no credit this time. I I'll pay cash for this. What's that? Yeah, I I'm not going to pay for this one for my payments. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Yes. Can I ask you, can I help you with something? Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, looking for my wife. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Where's my manners? <laughs> uh, my name is Fred. Fred Smoot from Waterloo, Iowa. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, sir. Nice to meet you there. And this here's my nephew. This is Eddie. Say hi, Eddie. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> hi, Eddie. <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, I don't mean to interrupt y'all, but I'm trying to find my wife. See, we was out there looking at some trucks, and I look up, and, and, and well, she was gone. And, uh, well, if, if you knew Bernice, my, my wife, she's uh, uh, unusual. Yeah, she's, she's a big woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's so big we had to let out the shower curtain. <laughs> Customer. Oh, it's yeah. yeah, it sounds like she's been found. She's waiting for you over by the vending machine. Well, you're cheering up. <laughs> oh, my. So you were saying that you've already made financial arrangements with my manager? I did. I, uh, I hope you don't mind. No, 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 sir. That's not at all. Well, wow, that's, that's good. I kind of come from a small family, and we didn't have much growing up. This is my new first new car. Uh, you come from a large family? Yeah, you could say that. Three boys, three girls, live-in maid. Even had our cousin live with us for a while. Here, look. That's quite a bunch. <laughs> hey, uh, you mind if I pick this up later? No, I don't mind at all. We'll have it ready for you. Kind of got a special night playing with it. Wonderful lady. Well, all right. Just I'll have the guy shine it up and have it all ready for you. I appreciate that. At Pendergrove Branson, the customer is King. Do you have any questions about the car? Yes. Where do you put the gas? Yeah, let me, uh, there. Kind of hidden a little bit. Just open that up. Put in high octane, feed the horses. Yes. <laughs> Frames. Got it. Uh, how about the trunk? Ah, the trunk. Yeah, the trunk. Right above the gas. Thanks to Mr. Leggetti, I bought the coolest car you ever did see. Then I went to the nicest flower shop in town. I got the best flowers they had for my big night. Georgina and the boys are wonderful. Hello, Poppy. Oh, nice to Welcome see you, Martinez. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Ellen. Pleasure meeting you. George, please. We've got a great table for you. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Thank you. Follow me. Enjoy yourself. I'd like to welcome you to Florentinas. Can I go ahead and start you off with something to drink this evening? Make it two, uh, but make mine a sweet tea. And, uh, on the rocks. <laughs> you got it. Well, I used to come here as a kid with my parents, and well, now I just come here for this. else I can get you at this time? No. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. I hope you're having, you're having a great time and the food was good and uh, we're so happy you're here at the Florentina's uh, Italiano and ladies and gentlemen, right now we have a wonderful singer. She's about to come out here. Give her a big hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Georgina. Here she is.
Beautiful people, and well, and well, sometimes those beautiful people aren't as beautiful once you get to know them. All right, is there anything else I can get you at this time? No, not right now. Thank you. Well, Ellie, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, in this world, there are two kinds of people. There are the um, ordinary people. And the unordinary people, and then 
there's the uh, regular people, and then the unregular people. And, um, well, then there's the beautiful people. And, <clears throat> look, I hope I'm not scaring you. And, and, and well, I don't want anything different from you, and I don't want anything to change. I just don't want you to put me in that friend box. You know, the one that Jenny was talking about the other night? Mommy, I don't know what's going on between us, but I do know that I love spending time with you, and I love that you treat me with respect, and, well, you wanted to thank you the right way, and I don't want to be in any boxes either. Does that mean you'll, you'll keep seeing me? Of course, silly. Oh, well, great. Let, let's celebrate. Um, I got a promotion today at work. And... Well, Bobby, that's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. It's about your boss, Mr. Legetti. A girl I work with said that he's a pretty tough character and that sometimes, well, he does things that aren't exactly... Look, I've been hearing things, too. And I can tell you that, he, that he's a pretty ordinary guy. I, I've spent some time with him and, well, he's never treated me with anything but respect. When I was putting the security cameras up with him, he, I got to know him pretty well. He just, he's a good guy. Well, I, I hope you're right. He even gave me extra money, you know, to help with my mom. It was cash. And, he didn't even want me to tell her. I mean, he didn't want any of the credit. You're just, you're a nice guy, and I don't want to see you get hurt, that's all. Look, as you can tell, I'm a, I'm a big boy. <laughs> okay, well, maybe you're right. Sometimes I think that's all the girls at work know how to do, is gossip. Do you mind? No, go ahead. I'll go to the powder room. I'll speak of the devil. Hello, Michael. Grandpa, they didn't have cell phones back then. Oh, yeah. Grandpa gets a little mixed up sometimes. If you don't like it, you can tell your own story. <laughs> Walk out, boy. Mr. Anderson, you have a telephone call? Okay, thank you. Uh, would you excuse me? Go ahead. I'm gonna go to the powder room. I hate to cut this short, but there's emergency work I have to tend to. Some people just won't listen. Get this piece of filth out of here. Michael! What happened? It was Brooks. He went for a gun. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I... It was either him or me. I had to do it. I just had lunch with him yesterday and... Like I said, it was either him or me. Here, take this, all right? No, Michael, okay, I can't. listen for me. Yes, listen, Bobby. I get one more strike, I'm going away for life, or worse. Thank you. Give me your keys. Give me your keys. I'll drop, I'll drop off the car later. And go out the back. You shouldn't listen. I was so scared when I left that garage at night. My heart felt like it was gonna beat right out of my chest. I hope you girls never have to go through anything like that. Now you can learn from your grandpa's mistakes. I wanted to help Mr. Leggetti, but I didn't want any part of being in trouble.
table and Johnny gave me I'm about pinched out. <laughs> Are you an angel? Am I an angel? Don't be silly. Of course I'm an angel. I thought that angels were... Young looking? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We are, we are. They made me wear this old thing so you feel more comfortable. Oh, Grandma. Gum Oh. I have so many questions. What's it like up there? It is up there, isn't it? What? Well, of course it's up there. <laughs> you live up there. I'm just teasing. I, I'm so glad to see you. What are you doing here? Well, I heard that you were in a little bit of trouble, so I thought we might take a little walk. Oh. I don't know if you noticed or not, but police are out there looking for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take my arm. Take it. Stand on one foot. Repeat after me. Booty Rooney, out of tuning. Booty Rooney, out of tuning. Nothing happened. That's right. I just like to watch you act silly. Grandma. <laughs> it never gets old. Ow. Gunshot. The guy took about $35,000 in cash. Yeah, it was more like $75,000 when you figure in the bonds and the jewelry. I mean, I don't get it. I treat this guy like my old son. He's acting all nervous, so I put something in the trunk. I called out to him, and he just took off running on foot. But he dropped these. I'm have a look around. do to him. It's not what you did. Honey, this started a long time ago. Mom! Dad! Oh, remember, Bobby, they can't hear you. We're just here to love. I remember this. It was my 11th birthday. It was the night before Dad's interview at the factory. <laughs> I remember it, too. Let's just say that uh, your mom's bean bean lasagna and I did not get along. You know, Dad quit the factory. Something to do with Mr. Leggetti. As much as I loved him, he made a decision that night in my bedroom that I would never, ever grow up to be like him. You're not as far as you think you are, gumdrop. Thank you. Bobby! All right, darling, we'll get him a bike for Christmas. It's not the bike. Sometimes I wonder if, if I did the right thing, if you did the right don't thing. Don't you say that. I love you. And I don't regret anything. We will make it. We always do. The only reason I was able to get that job in the first place was because of your history with Ligetti. And now I can't even... I can't even make enough money to buy Bobby a lousy bicycle. Our history, as you put it, was over the day I met you. As for the money, Michael never should have put you in that position. You had to quit. You know Michael that. Michael Leggetti's not the kind of man that's just going to easily forget somebody who's cost him this much money, who he thinks cost him this, this, this much money. And he told me, basically, that if he goes to prison, that he'll get even with me. You didn't cost him anything. 
Michael never should have expected you to break the law. You had to quit, you know that. There was only one way this could end, once he got involved with those gangsters. Uh, I know, but... If he does go to prison like they say, I hope he goes for a long, long time. I just want what's best for you and for Bobby. I don't want Bobby to... to grow up without a dad like I do. Oh, you are a wonderful dad, and I love you very much. Now, let's get the cards out. Henry ought to be here pretty soon. Mom and Ligetti together? I wish I knew what dad was going through. There's more. Wait. Do you think we could just, just stay just a little longer? We can stay a little longer. Hey, Bobby, turn that radio up for me, hon. I got my baby. My baby's got me. We go together like an apple in a tree. She's so sweet. Okay, I'll give out too many cards. Huh? You scamper, you. Oh, man, I've already got a good hand. Seven cards. Seven cards. Of course, I might just be bluffing. I've got my baby. Well, here I'm glad you're finally able to make it. Yeah, she had a good hand today. How's that job down there? They're treating you all right? Yeah, it's fine. They're treating you all right? I think so. I have six, but... <laughs> Thought I was. Oh, Thought six cards. Six cards. Oh, six there. Cards. I mean, you got honey. Six. More than Thank you. I mean, you got nine. Take two. They're small. You've never been able to count, have you, Mama? Oh, you Mama, she was on game. Mama. Mama. <laughs> it's a lot better. Ah, this is a good hand. Can wow. jumpers be a pair? Well, you betcha. You got a well, pair right here. I'm telling you. I just get my hand away. Come on. Sure. No, no, no. It's my turn. It's your turn. Go fish. Just got all excited and jumped around. Yep, got it. Ooh, got some diamonds showing there. Wow. What are we playing? I'm going to have to take my shirt off. Okay, we're playing diamonds. Yes, we are. We're playing diamonds? I'm playing diamonds. It is a pea knuckle, but... Pea knuckle. That was the name of that guy you did. Look at that foot now. Came up with a pea knuckle. You have a pen or do you have diamonds? Thanks. Thanks for so wild. That's what they call me down for. Oh, oh, you put the cash. I can use that. I can use that. Oh, man, that was great. You, yay, you. You got it. He's one, I got it. I'm almost out. I'm oh, almost out. Look out. Here it goes. Oh, man. Don't put a diamond down. Oh, oh, man. I just got it. Oh, look at that. 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 We have to go now. Now, before we do, I want you to get a hold of yourself. This next place that we're going to go is going to be hard on you. It won't be easy to see. You think you're such a hot shot running this joint, telling all these little mechanics what to do? I don't think nothing. Take your turn. Besides, I do way more than just run this shop, and you know it. Big deal. You blow up one guy, and all of a sudden, you're Al Capone. Hey, <laughs> keep your voice down. Besides, I do what the boss tells me to do. You've been waiting a long time to get even with this guy. Says he thought about him all the time he was in the slammer. Hmm. Sounds like they're getting back from the funeral. Well, give me a drink or something. I want to talk to him anyway. You need a raise. If you're going to do more... You keep your mouth shut before I slap you in the face. Yes, sir, Mr. Cap. <laughs> Cap on. <laughs> hey. Hey, how'd it go? Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, you did a good job, kid. There's even a closed casket. Hey, get this. Kid even thinks I'm gonna help him out. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, but listen, you can have all the laughs you want, all right? See, they ever get wind of this, ever? Your history. You know I would never tell anybody anything, boss. Well, they got bigger plans for Bobby Anderson. Just laughs, all right? You got it? All right, don't be talking to that big mouth girlfriend of yours. Well, Getty had my dad killed. Oh, Grandma. I was so wrong. Honey, if it helps, your dad's guardian angel took him early. He didn't feel a thing. And he's so happy now. He is? Yes. Just the other day up there in the main cafeteria, he was joking with Moses and Charlton Heston. He was? Wait. Charlton Heston's not dead. Up there, there's no beginning and no end. It's eternity. Anyway, you know your father. He's quite the jokester. He was telling Moses and Charlton how much they looked a lot alike. That sounds just like Dad. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Let's go. Booney, Booney! We know you're in there. Robert Boone Anderson, come out with your hands oh. up. Here, that reminds me, when I was a young girl. Oh, talk about some good memories. <laughs> well, Bobby boy, I guess my work here is done. You know what to do. You bet I do. When I was putting the security cameras up at the warehouse, I put an extra one in Mr. Leggetti's office. <laughs> You don't even know about the one in the basement. <laughs> you always were a little stinker. <laughs> I mean, thinker. <laughs> well, I did it to protect him. He, he didn't even know about the other recorder. That's my boy. See, you'll clear your name, and you'll put that murder behind bars for the rest of his life. What can I do to thank you enough, Grandma? Oh, well, you can. <laughs> Just hold on to your pearly gates. Oh, honey, I gotta go. You call me back home. Give Dad a big old hug. Thank you, sir. Love you, honey. Oh, you better get out there real quick. There's a cop out there and he needs to get to the hospital. His wife's gonna have a baby any second. Yes, ma'am. Uh, tell Dad that I think about him every day and I miss him. And Love him very much. I'll do it. Of course, you can tell him you're something about old 40 or 50, ooh, 30 or 40 years. Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you again. I'm in here. If you need me bad enough, I'll be back. That's good to know. Yes, sir. Now, you tell that little Ellen of yours that I expect to have my first great granddaughter named after me. Oh, I sure will. Did you say great grandma? That was the best story ever, Grandma. Yeah, it sure was. I'm too. I'm glad you two enjoyed it. I love you, Grandpa. I love him more. I love him to add a space on the top of the bottom of my heart. Well, you know what? I love him. Oh, girls. I love you both very, very much. We love you too. Now, it's bedtime. Oh, Grandpa, please don't make us go to bed. Oh, now you go, go on up there. Grandpa will be up there pretty quick just to tuck you in. Now, you tell Grandma Ellie that Grandpa's just going to sit here and rest his eyes a minute, okay? Okay. Ellie, the door! <clears throat> Someone! The, the door! Who could that be this time of night? Oh, Bobby boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Grandma, what are you doing here? Oh. Well, ask him. No, don't. People will think you're talking to yourself. <laughs> Honey, 
Are you ready for the ride of your afterlife? What? Booney Wooney! Ma'am, if you'll have a seat right here. Inmate, remember the rules. I see you got my letters. Would you come to relive some memories? Well, don't you flatter yourself, you pig. <laughs> then why'd you come to see me? When we were young, I made the biggest mistake of my life being with you. That's ancient history. Where, where, you hate my guts, whatever. And even though you took the only man for me I ever loved, I'm going to give you something you've always wanted. <laughs> yeah, too late. I hear Mallow Monroe's dead. What could you possibly give me? A secret. We had a son. And no one will ever ever know that you are Bobby's father. The evening's so tender and sweet Honey suck along a dream or has the moon bewitched me? Stars sparkle above like diamonds in the sky. My heart sings of love yet to come. Oh, how the time flies. Seems I've been waiting here through the Leaving me longing for more I've been betwixt and between But never did I lose the dream Out of the blue Gaze on heaven above Clear stardust from my eyes my I looked up and, and, and well, she was gone And uh, well if, if you knew Bernice, my, my wife, she's uh, uh, unusual. Yeah, she's, she's a big woman. Oh, yeah, yeah, she's the big we had to let out the shower curtain. Oh, yeah. When she was born, it was May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. <laughs> yeah, she's ugly, too, my lord. We, she's what? I, she's ugly. I took her to a plastic surgeon. We tried to put a tail on her. She's ugly, son. Oh, my God. Oh, she'd gag a possum. I mean, she's like that. Oh, my lord. Son, I'm sorry you had to hear all that. Oh, there's so much I could tell you right there. Oh, she's so big. When she was born, it was oh, cesarean with a backhoe. I mean, she's a great big old woman. Now, really, anyway, yeah, she's a big woman. Oh, yeah. When she was born, it was May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. <laughs> yeah, she's so big. It was cesarean with a backhoe. <laughs> when, when mosquitoes see her, they say, Buffet! <laughs> oh, yeah. She's big. She works at a slaughterhouse. She strangles those cattle. I'm mean, like that right there. They don't feel a thing. I do number. They are number. <laughs> if everybody's kind of talking to her. <laughs> This is Bambi Van Birch on the set of Booney Wooney. This is the real Bambi Van Birch. <laughs> Seems I've been waiting here through the years for this very night. Doesn't surprise me now that you've come in. Before, if I should sleep, may I never awake? 
Call about a possible robbery in progress and a gunshot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Things that are more important than what you're doing right now. Boney Wooney! Make the short drive to Branson and save thousands at Pinnegar Chevrolet Buick GMC. Check out the huge discounts on new Silverados, Sierras, and SUVs, like the GMC Terrain. Get discounts up to $3,000 off new GMC Terrains in stock. Pinnegar Branson has the largest selection of Buicks around, including the new Buick LaCrosse. Pinnegar Chevrolet Buick GMC, five minutes north of Branson on Highway 65, or online at PinnegarBranson.com.